Good morning everyone. Happy Tuesday. Yep, second last week for us Sydney siders in lockdown. I don't want to rub it into anyone else and I don't want Melbourne people to be sad um, or anyone else who is, is doing it tough at the moment. But there is definitely a feeling of excitement in the air in Sydney. And the song I'm going to play today, I'm only going to play it for a short time because we know what happens. All right, are we ready? This is the song for the mood that I'm feeling in Sydney at the moment. Are we ready? And Melbourne, you're going to be there soon. I know. Ready? Good morning, everyone. Let's have to play this song. Can we all feel it? I can. Freedom Day is on its way. And I don't want to play it too long, although I would like to play the whole song, but we can't. So... Maybe just one little chorus, or maybe not. Good morning. Oh, Lisa, you're in the middle this morning. Wow, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I think I'll have to get this music off. Maybe just one chorus, okay? No, maybe not. What do you think? Uh, okay, one. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can we all feel it? Yeah, we can feel it. Freedom is coming. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stop it there because I don't want to get that uh, cut off again. So we just have a little snippet of music. Good morning, Mish Kanfor from New York. Hello, everybody. I am going to start off today's session by announcing the winner, actually winners, of the copy of Now for Something Sweet. I loved all your entries and I really, the problem is, is that I chose it and when I choose it, I just could not choose one. So I have chosen three winners of a copy of Now For Something Sweet, which I will send out, um, well, as soon as you send me your addresses. So I'm going to announce the winners and I hope you're online, you may or may not be, but there are three winners in no particular order. Winner number one is... XX Lisa Vandenberg, who actually is in Manila at the moment. You've won a copy of the book. Please DM me your postal address. Um, winner number two is Joe Gelbart. It is Trableg, T R A B L E L E G, which is his Instagram, which is actually, I worked out Gelbart backwards. Okay, so Joe Gelbart is number two. And number three is Rebecca Bexy 800. So three of you, I will send you a DM anyway to tell you you've won if you're not online. And just thank you for, for playing and for being part of it. And you're each going to get a copy of this beautiful book, Now for Something Sweet, um, which if you don't have anyone else online, just grab yourself a copy. Um, it's really worthwhile. It's a beautiful book with a million good recipes. One of which we are making today, but in a small version. We are making something called Plecinta which is a Romanian feta pie, and it's photographed beautifully in this book. Have a look how nice it is. It was done originally in a big square, and um, I've just made it a bit smaller, a bit more manageable, and we're doing it in a 20 centimetre round. Or you could hear, um, oh, I'm just reading, you're all saying you want to see what they wrote. Yes, you know what? I was going to read them out, and of course I haven't. So what I'll do is I will post it, okay, and I'll show you what each of them wrote. Um, it was lovely touched my heart as all of your entries did okay don't i'm sorry for those of you who didn't win you all won in my heart um okay oh good morning cheryl how you doing good to see you here um really good to see you here okay so that's the placenta that we're making today the recipe comes from dov sacconi who's um a, a chef israeli chef who lives in australia who started um, he had Dove's way back in the day, and now he has the Yalla brand of dips and things, and he's doing amazing stuff. So if you like hummus and tahini and all those things that come in the packets, Yalla brand is a really good one. They have so much more than dips, though. All right, let's start. I want to start straight away. Before I go through the ingredients, before I go through everything that you need, I want to get the leek on because it needs to cook, and we need to, to get it going. So I'm going to put the pan on hot before I start. Ovens on everyone who's cooking along, 200 degrees Celsius, and put a heavy baking tray in the oven to heat up. I just put my oven tray that comes with it in the oven on 200. I want the I want the tray to be hot because when we're not blind baking pastry and we're cooking a pie, it's always better to have a hot tray underneath. It just helps that bottom layer cook through. Okay, 
big saute pan. I'm using a big non-stick anilon. I'm putting in about a tablespoon of olive oil. A bit more, a bit less. It won't matter. And I'm going to put in my chopped leek. Okay. As soon as it gets hot. You want to know what page it is? I'll tell you. But do you know that there's an index on our website? for all our four cookbooks. And you can just put in, you can search by so many different ways and it tells you the page number and the book that a certain recipe is in. Page 306, okay? Page 306, olive oil is hot, pan is hot. I want them to sizzle when they go in, so I'm being a bit patient and just waiting, all right? I wanna chuck it in already, but I, I know that if I put it in and it doesn't sizzle, I'm gonna be very disappointed. So I'm just gonna wait. Oh, my oil looks like a whale again. I don't know if you saw my Instagram story the other day. Same thing's happened. I think it's a sign. What would a whale mean, do you think? Um, you can use any oil you like in this. Um, I'm using extra virgin for this one because I want that flavour. But it's only a tablespoon, so it really won't make a huge difference. A little sizzle, okay. Nothing too... Uh, yeah, I can hear it. Not too exciting. Okay. Let's get that cooking okay I want to soften that I'm also going to throw in my garlic which actually I threw in by mistake um, I'm using one clove of garlic those of you who know me by now know that I'm going to put it in whole and take it out later someone please remind me to take it out so it doesn't go in my pie if you like garlic crush it and put it in now we're going to cook it with the leek and the oil okay we'll just let that get going. I'm going to put the lid on in a few minutes just to help it along the way because we don't have hours and hours together and I want to get this pie in the oven. Okay, let's talk about the rest of the ingredients while that is cooking. You're going to need pastry. Now, I did separate post the recipe that's in the book and I've made it and it's a beautiful butter short crust and um, I have already made it and divided it into two thirds and one third. It's been in the fridge overnight and I've taken it out um, of the fridge to so I can roll it. I mean, we'll get through the ingredients, don't worry. But the only thing you need to have had ready was your tablespoon of oil and your leek finely sliced. If you haven't done that, slice your leek now. Make sure it's clean inside when you cut it in half lengthwise. And then slice it and put it in there with the olive oil, okay? Page 360 in the book, Thalia, okay? Um, so, and there's also an index in all our books at the back, so you can just look it up as well if you can't remember the page number. I've just got leek cooking in the olive oil. I want to soften it while I get everything else ready. Good morning from Perth. Nice to have you here. All right. Um, oh, that's lovely. So a whale is a symbol symbolic of communication, magnificence, wisdom. It's a sign. Mm, what do you think it's a sign of? That I'm all those things? I don't think so. But you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Ingredients. One leek, one tablespoon of olive oil. Clove of garlic is there in there as well. We're going to need a bunch of silver beet or English spinach if you like. I sort of call, I call this Australian spinach, silver beet. It is that one there. And what I've done is I've washed it and I've cut off just the part that's stalk alone. I'm happy to use this stalk. That'll cook down nicely. Okay. Oh, 306. Thank you. Not 360 bad advice already. So I've got my bunch of silver beet which we're going to chop up in a minute. It's about 300 grams of leaves after you've trimmed it. Okay, that's what I want. But you know what? A bunch, a big bunch, a small bunch, it'll all work out fine. Then you're going to need lots and lots of cheese. Now this is cooking very high. I'm going to turn it down now a bit. I'm just going to put the lid on for a, for a couple of minutes just while I um, talk through the rest of the ingredients. I want it to start to steam and soften, all right? Cheese, heaps and heaps of cheese, okay? 350 grams of feta cheese. I'm using Dodoni feta, um, which I've got to say, I really like supermarket Dodoni. It's very good. I have got 150 grams of ricotta cheese, and that's about two-thirds of a cup of ricotta. And I have two cups of grated parmesan, 150 grams. Now, I don't usually use this one. This is actually the one from the supermarket. I just thought I'd try it. Uh, I think it'll work perfectly for this recipe, okay? So I've got 350 grams of feta, 150 grams of grated parmesan, and 150 grams of fresh ricotta. So that's three cheeses. 
I'm going to need four eggs. I'll tell you about my egg story in a minute. Hello, Romford from Port Macquarie. Nice to have you here. And good morning from Melbourne. I've got people from all over the country today. And Manila. And New York. Good to have you here. And Canada. Yeah. Covering most of the world that's awake at the moment. Okay. So that's all the ingredients. Of course, then I forgot you will need, because I did forget it this morning. Hold on. My dill. You'll need a bunch of dill or half a bunch of dill if you're not such a fan. Uh, but it does add something. Let's get it. I had forgotten it and I had to run out this morning to get it. All right. Go through the ingredients one more time. You're going to need some sort of pastry. We'll talk about it in a second. You need oil and leek and garlic, which is cooking in the pan. Then you'll need your bunch of silver beet, which we're going to chop in a sec, and your three cheeses. We've got ricotta, feta, and parmesan. If you've got a little bit of less, a little bit less one, and a little bit more of the other, don't stress. Just put it all in. It's a beautiful rustic pie, and the cheese level, even though this is the perfect amount, don't, don't worry if you're not quite there. And of course, half a bunch of dill or a bunch of dill and lots of salt and pepper to taste. Four eggs, which we're going to mix through. Then, once you've, we've made the pie, which is going to be in a little while, we're going to have to glaze it with an egg yolk, some milk and some sesame seeds. But we'll come to that a bit later. All right. Okay, this is going well. This is, I don't want it too brown. It's starting to brown, so the lid is going to help stop that browning too much. Okay, while that's just getting soft, I'm going to chop my silver beet. Okay, is everyone who's cooking along following now? I hope that I haven't gone too fast. Um, I think it's a good idea to cut it, cut each piece along the stalk just to make it easier to chop. I find this easier to deal with than English spinach. English spinach has like a, a beach full of sand in it every time. I'm going to move this over the camera when I'm finished cooking, okay? We're just going to cook these together. And now I just want to chop the silver beet into, just slice it up, okay? The stalks are already cut in half lengthways, and I'm just doing them across now. It's going to wilt to nothing, okay? We know that when we cook spinach or silver beet, you know, spinach particularly, this is the same. You start with that much, right? And you end up with that much. So, same, same. But silver beet tends to hold its um, weight a bit better, I think, than spinach. Um, can you use frozen spinach? Yeah, you can. You can. Um, I think you can either defrost it before you use it and put it in paper towel to get that yucky water out, or cook it through and cook it with the lid off till the water evaporates. I think you can. It's not as it's not quite the same. What I like about this is that you can actually see the pieces of spinach or silver beet in it, and it's really nice. But of course, spin frozen would be fine. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, so I'm just going to chop all this and everyone needs to do the same. I'm going to use my colander to put it in. Okay, so is everyone chopping silver beet? Good morning, Jay Kaplan. I'm glad that Archie is there. Hope Archie's doing well. Archie's a dog, by the way. By the way. For those of you who don't know and haven't been here before, we do have a few animals that cook with us. We have a cat called Moggs, and we have a dog called Archie, and of course we have, uh, I can't re remember the name of Calm's cat. Um, yes, kale would be good too in this. I, I think that would be good, cooking kale instead of this spinach. Okay, that'll do. I'm going to chop it again. You know, I want to chop it, can you see how, no, you probably can't see. So I'm chopping it. Not too finely, but you know, I want them in little bits like that. Probably one centimetre pieces, okay? I'm just chopping that and I'm going to put it in there into the pan in a second. So just keep chopping everyone. I will look up from time to time, but you know, I don't look up and chop and answer your questions at the same time. It's just too dangerous. Um, so I am watching my hand and making sure that I'm cutting my spinach nicely. Okay, how are we going everyone? Who's cooking along today? Let me know. Um, who made their own pastry is what I'd like to know. Um, pastry for me is something that I love to make myself and I don't generally use bought pastry, but I don't have a problem with anyone who wants to. And if you want to use bought pastry for this, a lovely butter short crust would be nice. Um, a sour cream pastry would be nice. Um, but this 
recipe which you can find in the book for the pastry which I did post is really really good um, oh I'm glad Dorit's cooking and Susie's cooking I'd love to know what you guys did for pastry um, because there's not enough time for me to demo the pastry and use it for the tart it's always got to rest um, and this one rests overnight which makes it really really lovely uh, okay so that's my little these cute little leaves Cute. Okay, so that's my spinach, just about chopped. Okay, Maureen made the pastry, good to see, excellent. Oh, and one marathon girl, very good. Okay, um, Jennifer, well, you'll watch for next time when you're unpacked. Um, that'll be great. Well done, everyone who made it, or even well done if you bought it. Doris, well done. I think we can also, and I was talking to um, a friend on the phone this morning, while I was walking my dog, my friend Alana, and I was saying, I think that the song I'm going to use is Can You Feel It? You know, because we're all excited. She said, it's a double entendre. And I was like thinking, what does she mean? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you're making a pie with phyllo, and can you feel it? And I was like, oh, my God, that's so clever. But there's, I told her it's not a tart with phyllo. It's actually with short crust. But you could absolutely do it with phyllo. There's no reason you couldn't do it. Um... I, I did a class with Michael Rantizzi on Sunday night and some of you were there and it was fantastic. It was really lots of fun. And he did a 15 layered phyllo chicken bastilla, which is a Moroccan type pie. And you could just as well do 15 layers of phyllo pastry in your tart tin, in your spring form tin like he did, and put this filling in it to bake. And I think that will be fantastic. Um, so Jacinta, which pastry you should buy? A really good brand is Kareme, C-A-R-E-M-E, -E, which they sell in um, stores and some supermarkets. I wouldn't do a puff for this. I would do either a sour cream pastry or a short crust or phyllo, as I said. Um, the phyllo idea is actually a really good one. Okay, so that's my silver beet all chopped up. I'm happy that's done, putting it all there. You can see it's quite a lot. Get rid of that. Okay. And now I'm going to add my silver beet to my leg. And you can see it's, it's a lot. Uh, it always is a lot. And it always will shrink down. I'm just going to cook it. I'm going to turn the heat back up to high. Um, and I'm going to um, sort of this. Yes, um, exactly. Jennifer makes a good point. When we did the class with Michael... We had leftover phyllo, and that's exactly what... I wish that I would have thought of it. I would have done the phyllo today, but I've made the pastry, so I'm going to use the short crust today. This short crust from Dog is just a really good um, ratio of flour to butter with a tiny bit of iced water. It's easy to do in the food processor. Butter, flour, iced water, salt. Sorry, start again. Butter and salt. Sorry. I'm going to start again. Flour and salt in the food processor, mix it together as you'll process it. Add in your cold cubed butter, process it until it's got crumbs, add your cold water, process it, pulsing, process pulse, till it forms a ball around the blade. Take it out, divide it into two thirds and one third, wrap it in the fridge. And it's really easy, like it's really, really easy. Um, yeah, I think most leafy greens um, baked by Nathan would go nicely with this one, really nicely. We've talked about kale already. You can do a mixture of kale and English spinach and silver beet. Um, Cavallo Nero would be lovely as well. I think, you know, that's the Tuscan cabbage. So once this starts to wilt a bit, which it is already, I'm going to put the lid on. Mix it well, make sure you get all those leaky bits from the corners and the edges, the sides, so they don't burn. And I'm just going to let it cook for a few minutes. I've got a bowl ready, because as soon as it's cooked, I want to put it into the bowl. We need it to cool as quickly as we can. If we weren't doing this Instagram Live, I would, of course, just let it cool to room temperature, take a half an hour, but we don't have that much time, so I'm going to just... Put it in another bowl so it cools quickly. Let's get the dill ready. So, now, if you're a dill lover, as I said, use a whole bunch. I'm a, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I don't mind it, I don't love it. So I'm going to cut off the fronds, which is what we call dill leaves, 
and take them take the fronds off the stalks okay um, ah thank you Hilda recommends the pastry from the feast goes on the mushroom and zucchini roll that is a beautiful pastry made with cream I think that's also a very good one but this one is so simple um, there's very little to measure very little to do and I really love it okay I'm going to turn this down that's a bit hot and that's just steaming away so I'm just going to leave the little tiny stalks on because I'm you know a bit lazy sometimes but no one minds do you mind so I'm just taking off the fronds from the dill I find jobs like this tedious I don't know about you but I'm not a good herb picker just just wish they'd come already off the stalk isn't that a bad thing to say I'm sorry and I'm gonna be honest with you I find it a tedious task um, especially when you have to like pick leaves from a whole bunch of parsley for something and you just want the leaves and not the stalks honestly half the stalks end up in my salad because I just can't be bothered so sometimes it actually doesn't matter sometimes it does matter more often than not it doesn't and because we're cooking because we're mixing this through with lots of other things um, but we're not cooking it you don't want the big stalks but the little ones are fine all right so I'm just gonna and dill is one of those things that um, you know sticks to your fingers if the bunch is a bit wet and you know it's tedious um, uh, Angie Realford favorite herb of all time reminds you of your granny yeah it is a bit of a granny's herb isn't it it, it, it actually is and some of you may know this I have told you before that I grew up in a house without herbs I grew up in a very um, I mean we had you know my, my family my parents weren't foodies and and so the, the only herb we ever had was dill in the pickled cucumbers never saw parsley never saw mint never saw anything I mean coriander wasn't even in Australia then probably we never saw it in our house and so it was a discovery as a young adult to see that there was a whole world of herbs and spices that I'd never seen before all right that'll do I've had enough of that and I've just got a pile of dill about that much and I'm just going to chop it up okay let me give this another stir yep that's steaming beautifully a bit of liquid in there which is fine we'll take the lid off at the last minute all we're doing not all what we're doing is we're just wilting this right down okay it's going to cook for another hour in the oven so um it just needs to be well wilted it'll just be by the time i chop the dill it'll be ready so i'm just chopping up this dill so it is nice and fine because you don't want a whole chunk of dill in your mouth i don't think it's the nicest herb for that you want the flavor of it throughout okay so that's what we're doing so chop up your dill everyone um I must say it is quite good once you've done the picking of the leaves and then the chopping you can think job done I'm ready for the next I'm going to tell you what I did on the weekend with my pie it was not a good story and I was very sad about it yeah we all make mistakes from time to time that's my deal roughly chopped ready to go in let's just get to this okay I think that's good it's been about five minutes my you can see how much it's reduced it was a whole huge saucepan full and now it's not frightening full I'm going to get my bowl and I'm going to put all of it into the bowl to cool yeah my long thing okay hopefully you are almost up with me where I am So this is what I have, a bowl of wilted spinach and leek. And I'm going to remember now to take out my garlic clove. I'm just going to go on a little hunt for it. There it is. Garlic is coming out because you know I don't like it so much. I want the flavour of it without the intensity of it. And this just has to cool a bit, okay? You could put it on some ice if you're really in a hurry. You actually don't have to use yours now. I just need to go on and do the next part. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool. I'm going to move you over here because we don't need the stove anymore. This very technical setup here, which is a stand on a cardboard box, okay? 
it has to be just the right height to get the top of my head in and as much of the bench as I can get. It's very technical here in this kitchen. All right, I have got in a big bowl my feta cheese. I've got my three cheeses ready, my parmesan and my ricotta. I've got my dill. I've got my mixture, which is cooling. And I've got salt and pepper at the ready, okay? I want to tell you what happened to me on the weekend. So on, I thought I'm going to make this pie on Saturday, going on a picnic on Sunday. It'll be perfect. It's great after a day, actually. It almost gets better. So I made the pastry on Friday. I made the filling on Friday. And I said to myself, I'll just have to add the eggs. I made everything, cheese, spinach, whatever, everything together. I just have to add the eggs and assemble it. Come Saturday morning, roll out my pastry, line my tin, put the filling in, put the thing on, spent some time making a beautiful um, crimp around the outside, egg washed it, sesame seeds, put it in the oven, thought, shit, I forgot the eggs. I forgot the eggs. So what I got was a very rustic pie, because what eggs do is that they bind the filling together that was an issue, but they lighten it. And my pie was, I've got actually, I've got it here. Um, this is my leftover pie. There wasn't much left over. Um, my friends who ate it on my picnic, I don't think they really liked it. Danny didn't eat his. I ate mine. It wasn't that bad. Pastry was still good. So that's what it looked like, okay? That was a bit of my pie. Um, the filling was very dense because there was no lightness. You know, when you put eggs in it and you cook it, it puffs up and it gives it air and lightness and deliciousness. So don't do what I did. If you do it all ahead, you can, but remember to add the eggs. So I won't make that mistake again. And that's my pie. So, you know, you can see my little crimp there. It was very rustic. Anyway, so that was my sad pie story from the weekend. You know what it's like to sit there with friends who are um, about to eat your food and then you know that you're giving them something that's not excellent. But they were very good friends and I did, of course, say, hey, this pie isn't the best. Okay, so let's just um, put the feta in a bowl and just smush it with a wooden spoon. And I actually like to do this. You can do it with your hands or a wooden spoon or a masher. We're just going to break it up into pieces so that this feta is spread throughout the pie filling. Okay. Do that it's much easier with your hands i might get my hands in in a minute then i'm going to add i'm just going to add all the cheeses i'm going to use my hands because i can't do it with a, with a spoon it's too hard okay yeah thalia we all make mistakes but it's just annoying when you make a mistake where you've put so much effort into the pastry and the filling and rolling it all out and then having a not the great pie it's just i was really sad for a few minutes there about that and then I thought, two people said to me, well, you can tell that story on Tuesday and everyone will love that story. And I thought, well, there's the silver lining. <laughs> it's my bad pie story. All right, so I'm just smushing together the fish. I'm finding it easy with my hand. Sometimes your hand and your fingers do a much better job than a wooden spoon, I've got to say. And this is one of those cases. I still want some chunks of feta, though, because I want to see them. And, you know, they'll be lovely together. So that's that. I'm going to add in my ricotta. and give that a stir, I don't want to put my hand in that. And my dill. So it's all my not hot ingredients at the moment. I'm just waiting for um, this to cool. And I'm not gonna put the hot mixture in till, um, till I'm ready to put it in, because I've got to still roll out my pastry. So now I'm gonna crack my eggs and I'm gonna put my eggs in they can actually sit there with it, okay? So I'm just cracking my four eggs. Bit of shell never hurt anybody. All right. So four eggs. Seems quite a lot. And it's a big loss if you don't put your eggs in. I can tell you that from my experience. So I've learned, I learned something from that, right? I learned that a pie without eggs is not the same as a pie with eggs. So if anyone wants to say to me, can we leave the eggs out? I'm going to say, no, you can't. I mean, of course you can, but it won't be the same. It really wasn't the same at all in any way. All right, eggs are done. I'm just going to get a, um, oh no, it's okay, I've got a paper towel here. I'm just going to say my purple chucks, wasn't I? Um, and I want to give that a mix. You know what, I'll just use the wooden spoon. I've just got my eggs in here. I'm just going to break up the yolks and give them a beat. 
using a wooden spoon. You can use a whisk if you want, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. I'm actually not going to mix it in just yet. We'll mix and season just when we're ready. I'm going to put it aside. So I've got my cheeses and dill. I have got my eggs beaten. I've got my spinach or my silver beet and leek cooling. And I'm going to season it all when I put it together because we need to now get onto the pastry. Okay. So I just want to clean up this mess because you know what will happen is I'll think, oh, it doesn't matter. And then I'll have bits of dill through my pastry, which is not what I want. I'm using a 20 centimetre spring form tin. I don't need to grease it. I never grease tins when I make pastry. There's enough butter in it to grease itself and I've never had a sticking problem. But what you might want to do if you want to serve it on baking paper, which I love to do, is just put a piece of baking paper in the bottom. Um, this is not good. Hold on a second. I have dropped lots of things on the floor. Okay, hold on a sec, I'll just wash my hands. Okay. So, I'm just trying to think, do I want baking paper in the bottom? On one hand, it's great because um, it makes it easier to lift it off. But on the other hand, I don't because I actually want the pastry to cook well and the baking paper might hinder it a little bit. So, I'm actually not going to do baking paper. I take that back. 20 centimetre spring form. You could do a square one. You could do a big loaf. Um, it's just got to be about this size. I have my two pieces of pastry. The bigger one is to fill and is to line the tin, the base and the sides. And the small one is for the lid. And then we're going to crimp the edges. Um, <laughs> Maureen said, where's Winston? I can see him right there. He's behind you. He's just curled up on the couch asleep. Um, standard egg size for our recipe is extra large. In our book, we have kitchen notes at the beginning, which we really, really worked so hard on. So please read them because we took a lot of time to get them right. And we've got everything about measurements and ovens and butter and eggs. And for our eggs, we say, um, yeah, the eggs we use are free range and extra large with a minimum weight of 67 grams, two and a third ounce. So extra large, but large will be fine. If you use tiny eggs, just add an extra egg where you need to. Okay. So these ones I'm using are, I love these ones, the um, Holbrook paddock, which has 40 hens per hectare. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I did joke that it's like Club Med for chickens. Um, it's truly a holiday resort. You know, you can have 10,000 hens per hectare for free range eggs. These have got 40. Okay, so these hens are happy. Um, free roaming, grass fed hens, 700 grams minimum total weight. So. The biggest you can get here is 800 and these are 700 and that's what I use for everything. Okay, for rolling we need a couple things. Rolling him and always have some extra flour ready. I know it's hard for you to see with the writing but um, I will do my best and you can do your best to see. I'm going to sprinkle some flour on the um, bench just a little bit. I'm going to unwrap my Thing, and it needs to be, make sure it's rollable. If it's too hard it's, and it's hard to roll, then it's not out of the fridge for long enough, okay? And if you touch it with your rolling pin and it starts to melt, it's been out of the fridge too long. We don't want the butter to melt, okay? We want the butter to stay in its bits in the pastry so that when it goes into the oven, the butter heats up and puffs up the pastry a little bit and you get that lovely shortness of layers of flakiness. Okay, I'm going to flour my rolling pin a bit and I'm just going to start rolling. This is a really good dough, a really good pastry. It's so easy, it is so forgiving, it doesn't crack. I've got some other amazing pastry recipes and some of them crack and require a bit more attention. This one is really lovely. Okay, so just roll it out gently. I always roll gently. I turn it from time to time to make sure it doesn't stick. And I want to circle, I'm not doing such a great job of that because I'm trying to get it so you can see it um, in the bottom there. Ah, there you go. Thanks, Marcel. If you guys tap the screen, the writing goes away and then you can see. Thank you. Yeah, I did actually learn that the other day, but I forgot to say it. So thank you, Marcel. So I'm just rolling it out. I want it to be big enough to fill this and go up to the top. 
Um, and the challenge of the day when using this tin is to find a way to crimp it so that it looks beautiful. It's much harder when it doesn't come all when the filling doesn't come all the way to the top. And we'll see how it goes when the eggs are in. With and without the eggs, it didn't go to the top. So I had to reach down to do my crimping, which was fine. I was happy with it. You know, my expectations of myself are not that high. And if my crimping looks cute and rustic, happy. I'm not Martha Stewart and that's okay. So um, I would like to improve my crimping skills though, something I could work on. All right. Um, you are tapping, but where? I don't know what you are doing. I mean, you'll have to explain that. Um, so... I'm going to, oh, I see, tapping. Oh, maybe just on the writing. Just have a few little goes. Or maybe you swipe it down. See what you can do. Sorry, I didn't follow, but now I follow. All right. You can see it's bigger than the tin, which is great. I'm going to just use my rolling pin. You see how nicely it rolls up? Okay. And I'm going to just put it in there. And I want to lift it up and push it in to the tin like this okay and if it cracks it doesn't matter because we're going to patch it up patching is um quite an art i must say i've become very good at patching and the good thing about making pastry is that you can always patch always fill holes always fill cracks you don't need to stress about it but i just want to get it into the tin okay um and yes, of course, I've got bits of dill in my pastry now that I can see. It's just never going to go away. It's always, once you've got dill on your bench, you've got dill on your bench. Yeah, calm. How, how amazing is this pastry? Now, I want to show you how imperfect mine is because you need to see this so you don't look at yours and think, oh, my God, what's happening? So, you remember, we haven't greased it, which makes it um, easy to press because it sticks to the side a bit. And I want to lift it and push it down, okay, because it needs to fill right into those corners, okay. And I want to show you I've got cracks in the bottom and the edges. And I'm just going to take my little bits and I'm going to just fill them up. It's just so easy to do and you shouldn't be afraid of pastry. It is such a joy to make your own. It really, really is. I'm going to put that whole bit there on that side that looks a bit meagre. And I'm going to go around. I want it to come just above the top because I need to have some left over for crimping, okay? And I think if I wasn't doing it in front of you, I would be a little bit more careful, but I'm trying to get it done in a reasonable amount of time. And I'm just taking some of the overhanging bits and just bringing it up the sides all the way around, okay? Quite evenly so that we have room to crimp at all sides okay see what I'm doing I'm just trying I'm not overworking it. I'm just trying to get it even ish okay the cracks are filled um, I've got a piece of dill inside which I can't get I'm not going to get out just because and that's what it looks like now we're ready to make the filling actually before we do that let's roll out the top and get that ready this has to be the size that will fit just you can just want to tuck it in to the top of that tin. So it's about 20 centimetres that we're rolling it out to. Again, lightly floured bench. This pastry is, I don't know about you, but I love to eat raw anything. I love it. Mm. It's got salt, it's got butter. And just rolling it out. Again, flip it over, roll nicely. We want it to be as close, as close to a circle as you can get. Okay, because it's got to slip into the top. But remember, we are going to crimp it so there will be, if the edges aren't perfect, it doesn't matter. I just love a pie. I really, really do. I mean, a tart's delicious too, but I love pastry, so I love having it on the bottom and the top. So you should have your oven preheated to 200 with a heavy baking tray inside it so that we help the bottom of the tart cook. Okay, there's no blind baking in this, but we have to make sure that the pastry cooks through. All right, I think that looks about right. So see how lovely this pastry is. There's no tricks here. It's just pastry I made last night. It's really, really easy to work with and it's nice to roll and crimp. I've made mine 
a little bit bigger than the top. We'll come back to that in a sec. All right, let me get this mess out of the way. Okay, rolling pin out, filling time. I have got my three cheeses and my dill. I'm going to add my spinach mixture, which is called pretty much, and my eggs, which I've beaten. Okay. So I'm going to need to season this well. I'm going to put lots of pepper. I mean, it's delicious as it is, but the seasoning really takes it to the level it needs to go to. And of course, salt, essential. Remember, it's got feta, which is a bit salty, so you're not going to need as much as you might need. But remember, spinach just needs salt. It really, really does. So I'm being quite generous. And I'm using the beautiful Olsen. For those of you who don't know, there's a special thing on with Olsen's and Monday Morning Cooking Club. If you go onto their website, which is Olsen's, O-L-S-S-O-N-S, -S -S salt, 10% um, put in the code MMCC10 at the checkout, and you get 10% off everything. And there's also a special Monday Morning Cooking Club pack, which has my favourite three salts. Um, okay, so that's on Olsen's salt website. So I'm going to mix all this together. And of course, I've got to taste it. You have to taste this filling. I just can't believe I left the eggs out the other day. When I'm <laughs> mixing this now, I see how much better it's going to be. Um, you know, imagine if you baked a cake without eggs, how how heavy and terrible it would be. Well, this is the same. I mean, an egg, a cake that had eggs normally. You know. Okay, so this has got to be very, very well combined. I've got lovely chunks of feta. I have got the spinach, which has been wilted with the leek and a bit of garlic. Yum. And let's have a taste of this and see. Mmm, that's quite delicious. Doesn't need anything else. You know what? Maybe a little bit more pepper. It's got enough salt. I'm really happy with this. Okay, we ready? Have your pastry lined tin ready. We're going to put the filling in now. Just going to tip it in. I'm going to put my trusty spatula. You know I don't do a demo ever without using my spatula. I think there's been one in 50 sessions where I haven't used it. Um, and scrape all the lovely bits out. Make sure you get every last bit of this. Okay, and that's it. So it doesn't go all the way to the top, which makes the crimping mm, yum, a bit more challenging. Okay, um, Calm, I did remove the garlic. I did remember on my own, which was a miracle today. No one even had to remind me. But I know one of you would have reminded me as soon as I put it in the oven. So I thought I'm very happy to remember before it was even time. That's my pie. Now, Let's talk about this. Perhaps I've rolled this a bit big, perhaps not. I'm going to put my lid on top of my pie, like that. It's lovely and smooth. Oh, stuck my nail in there. Okay, and now it's a matter of crimping the thing. And I'm just going to get a little knife. Just bear with me for one second, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. And I'm sure there's better ways to crimp it, when it's, but it's hard when it's down inside it. But I'll show you what I'm going to do. I, I don't know how to crimp well, but I learnt the little bit that I know by just Googling how to crimp pastry. And there are so many good videos on YouTube, on people's YouTube, showing you how to crimp well, you know, with your thumb and your finger around. But it's, as I said, it's much harder because we've got this dip, because it's not, it doesn't go to the top. So I'm going to cut, you know, I'm just going to cut it to the top of the tin. Let's start with that, all right? Because I want it to be the same. And... What I'll do is I'll keep this pastry in the fridge. If I'm going to bake again, do another pie, then I can use this one for patching if I ever need it. It's always good to have it. Okay, so that's pretty much the same height all the way around. It just goes to the top. Now, sorry, I keep picking the bits. You could just bake it like that, 
you could actually seal it around the edge like that or what I'm going to try to do is a little crimp but, you know I'm feeling the pressure because you're all watching but I'm starting by taking it just bringing it inside like lifting it away from the top edge just not you know just pushing it in it should come away about a centimeter okay and I'm going to go around um, okay that's great Erin of Cloudy Kitchen have a look at that everyone there are people who are just crimpers and they do it beautifully that's that's not my skill set but I will do my best so you get your finger and your and your thumb and you push it like that and then you push your finger and then like that so you just keep going around like that and you'll get better of it better at it as you go around like I do and you might have to redo your first bits so I just go like that with my finger and push the next one my finger and the next one my finger and the next one all the way around it's easy if you've got a turntable to turn it around but you know what this is okay for me um, I'm quite happy with how this is looking it just looks lovely to have a crimped tart I must say I haven't cut that properly okay so it's got to be a little bit away that's too much there a little bit away from the edge using your finger and your thumb of your next hand of your other hand and pushing it in some parts are easier than others but just I don't expect perfection from this and first time you shouldn't either but you guys might have really good crimping skills mine are, are um, you know passable at best but that's okay I should practice some more so I'll show you what I've done it's not bad at all actually not bad at all um, it's quite lovely so that's my pie okay just crimped like that and I love it when it's cooked these edges are thick and the pastry is so delicious and flaky it's just yum and now we need to egg wash it and what we need is an egg yolk and some milk this is mine from Saturday it was one egg yolk and one tablespoon of milk I used half of it and I put it in the fridge saving it for today I don't need to waste an egg yolk when this will do two pies okay got that one egg yolk one tablespoon of milk in there and I'm now going to brush it all over okay it's a lovely liquidy mixture and it will give a golden sheen to the top of the pie I'm really happy with my pie today actually I must say it's nicer than the one the other day um, because practice does help right the more you're going to crimp the better you're going to be the more I crimp the better I get at it um, like anything really like anything which reminds me I'm chatting today at four o'clock to the art of homemaking on um, to Sally Ann on her insta live we're going to be talking about lots of lovely things so come along and join us it'll be a nice way to spend half an hour this afternoon um, it just reminds me because we're going to talk about you know how how do you improve your cooking skills how does one do that and and you'll have to wait for my answer won't you um, for this afternoon if you're finding crimping is hard or working with the pastry is sticky just flour your hands a little bit okay I'm just going to try to get inside all these little crevices because you might think oh, I can't be bothered you know I like to cut corners but this is one of those things that you don't want to cut the corner because then you'll have lovely golden pastry bits which with not golden bits and it's nice if it's quite uniform okay so I'm just carefully brushing this mixture over my crimping bits in the little crevices as nicely as you can and then we're going to top it with sesame seeds it's a really lovely easy pie um, you know you can see I have made it from scratch we've been going for for about 45 minutes um, and I do talk a lot but you see that it's not a hard pie to make and you can do them ahead do your pastry ahead make your filling ahead without the eggs add the eggs at the last minute when you fill it um, and then it's an easy thing to make the good thing about this pie is it sits in the fridge for a few days really well it lasts beautifully it's lovely at room temperature um, it's a great picnic thing which is why I chose it for this week and our picnics picnic fair in Sydney and Melbourne okay so how's everyone going are we all following with me okay how's that looking yep that's pretty good it's not perfect I know I could really sit here for an hour painting it carefully but I'm not going to okay um, 
Yes, Rose, we do have 21 cream spinach in our third book. It's always about the food. We have it. We got it. The secret is lots of cream. Okay, so that's it. Done. And you can see I only used probably a third of that egg yolk and you can keep it for a few days in your fridge. So that is that. Now I'm going to sprinkle it with sesame seeds. I keep my sesame seeds in the fridge. I keep lots of things. I've actually got a cool room which is just unbelievably good. And I have all my things in jars, nuts and seeds that last. They last much longer. And I'm just going to sprinkle maybe a tablespoon-ish of sesame seeds over the top. They just add a lovely touch to it. I'm really happy with how mine looks. I just want to tell you that. And I'm going to put it in the oven now. And this is important. It needs to really cook well, okay? I know it'll look golden in half an hour and you'll think, oh, it's ready. But the, the pastry takes time to cook through. So please put it straight onto your hot tray in the oven for 40 minutes at 200. And then turn it down to 180 and let it cook for another 15 to 20 minutes at least, okay? It just needs to cook through. The eggs have to be cooked. It actually looks beautiful. I'm gonna to have to take a photo of that before it goes in the oven. Um, I keep sesame seeds in the fridge because, um, because they've got little, sometimes little weevils and things in them that we don't even wanna think about. But if they're in the fridge, they seem to stay and not do what they do. I had a bad experience once with, with sesame seeds in a Tupperware in my pantry years ago and there was like a whole town of little things living in the sesame seeds and it just put me off keeping them out so I just keep them in the fridge and there's no harm done they just last longer. Um, yeah I agree can't stop eating this raw pastry it's so good mm, it's so good no no holes in the top of this pie needed just put it in the oven all right that is it for me. Um, I am very happy to say that we have made a pie in such a short amount of time. 200 degrees for 40 minutes and then 180 for about another 15 minutes or so or 20. It needs to be really golden brown and we've got to get the sides and the base cooked. No blind baking means that you've really got to be conscious of that and sometimes the base might be like a tiny bit not perfect but overall it's fantastic it's a great pie the full recipe this is a half is in now for something sweet um, I love it and I'm excited to eat this for probably dinner tonight I think um, good luck with your pies everyone I hope they all work out beautifully and please do post it on Instagram and tag Monday morning CC because I'd love to see them or send them to me and I will share them if I can um, that is my pie day today, my pie picnic day, and I hope that you all have success with your pies. Hope everyone in Sydney is getting excited for Freedom Day, as we might call it, the 11th of October. And I hope everyone in Melbourne knows that your time will come soon. I know it will. You're just a couple of weeks behind us, I think. Tomorrow I'm going to be back with a beautiful loaf cake. Um, perfect for picnics, perfect for any time. And um, next week's going to be my last week doing these regular four-a-week sessions. I don't know what I'm going to do after I'm thinking about it. Um, and next week's starting to look forward to summer entertaining because we can start to entertain again soon. Anyway, thanks all. I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place, unless I see you this afternoon at 4 p.m. Bye all. See you. Be well.